future, we want to say welcome. God bless you also. Sure. Let's uh, open our prayer, excuse me, open our service with a word of prayer together, please. And uh -huh. our heads. Sure. Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness and your grace and your blessings and your mercy, Lord, for bringing us here together, Lord, today, December 31st of this year, as we say goodbye to one year. and and uh, open up an, another one lord jesus we ask you that you would be with us lord god we know you're here we acknowledge yes. your presence yes. as your word has promised us that you would be with us lord god and so we thank you for being here lord we ask that we could enter we just come together in reverence and appreciation and and in the fear of god just recognizing your presence in the sanctuary lord god and we ask that you would please speak to us, feed us, Lord God, on that which we have need to hear, Lord. Um, we are living in a, in a day where we need you every day and every hour of every day, Lord God. And so with that recognition and, and awareness, Lord God, we approach your throne asking you to be with us this morning, Lord God, that you would touch each heart and mind. and and that you would give us more of you of that which you that that desire that you placed in our hearts for more of you that you would satisfy the hunger and the thirst for god and that you would give us more strength and more faith and love to continue on to help our fellow man lord jesus yes. our brother and our brothers yeah. and sisters that that need more of you lord god we can't do anything on our own lord jesus yes. it needs to be you working through us in us lord god and so yes. with that with that awareness lord god of, of just knowing that we're nothing without you lord god we approach your we approach you lord asking you to be with us today and to fill each need in the precious name of the lord jesus christ amen yeah. we're gonna read psalms 28 if you don't mind joining me and just reciting it together just a few verses there Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. Save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up forever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Let us let us go into worship. Amen. How many are happy because he lives? Amen. Amen. Those that are watching, God bless you. If you're happy because he lives and, and he's helping you, let's let us sing, okay? Because he lives. God sent his son, they called him Jesus. God sent his son. They
once again.
thanksgivings and the petitions and the offering. For those that are watching and those that have a need, those have a thanksgiving, I want to give thanks to the Lord. Just raise your hand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done for me and what you're doing for me and what you're going to do for me. Amen. Amen. Uh, if you have a petition, I have some here and thanksgivings. But if you didn't have a chance to email us or let some uh, one of us know or uh, just right where you're at, say, Lord, you know my heart, you know my need. Raise your hand and, and uh, according to your faith and His perfect will, He'll answer your need. Amen. Um, the Delgado family are giving thanks for Brother Pedro and Sister Maria's 50th wedding anniversary. Uh, we would like to thank the Lord for that. It's a momentous occasion that 50 years of a wedding and, and how uh, we were with them yesterday. And so we'd like to uh, give honor and glory for God to giving them the health. And we ask that the Lord will strengthen them and continue to strengthen them in health. We have an unspoken requ uh, request for the Chavez family. The Lord knows all things. We also have a prayer request for Demetrio Melendez for recovery from surgery. And we also ask, uh, Sister Liz Huerta is also asking for prayer for uh, recovery of her health. And as we take these petitions, thanksgivings to the Lord in prayer, missionary offering and tithing let us bow our heads dear heavenly father lord we humble ourselves lord jesus before thy throne of mercy lord asking for mercy lord jesus lord we we have nobody to come to lord but to you lord today we are recognizing that you are the author and finisher of our faith lord jesus so in faith we come to you presenting ourselves lord jesus each and every one of these petitions lord these thanksgivings and these unspoken requests lord jesus that lord that you consider them lord and be merciful lord and be gracious and shed your love upon each of these petitions and unspoken requests lord jesus you are the fountain of love, Lord, healing and mercy, Lord Jesus. So we ask, Lord Jesus, in believing that you will answer them, Lord, even as soon as they've been expressed, even if we didn't express them, Lord, you know our hearts. Lord, we also ask for the, the missionary offering, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask that you bless the cheerful giver, Lord, and as we pay your the tidings, Lord Jesus, we ask that you receive all of it with honor and glory, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I feel like giving the Lord a clap offering. You give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. Uh, how many are free? Those that are watching, is it, are you free? Let us sing. I am so glad. Jesus set me free. If you're happy, let us see. I'm so glad. Brother Nikki. I'm so glad. Jesus set me free. I'm so glad. Jesus set me free. Oh, I'm so glad. Jesus set me free. Sing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Jesus, 
Making a joyful noise, amen. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've changed that chord, yeah. and they say that's what I sing in, but we can never get it right. But he loves it. I'm so glad Jesus set me free, amen. Amen. I'm glad, <laughs> amen. Let's get ready for uh, the word of God and uh, let us prepare our hearts and uh, begin to. Uh, Prepare our, our hearts and our minds and settle ourselves. Let us sing Amazing Grace. Amen. As we uh, welcome Brother Alex Burunda Jr. to come and bring forth the word and to feed us and give us what we have need of today. Amen. Amazing Grace. so we can uh, make sure that we're okay. And, uh, can you guys hear me okay, those of you that are here? Okay. Because I, I tend to walk around and I, I so we can make sure that I'm heard, or that the Word of God is heard, and then you can judge by the words that you hear. Lord Jesus, we come to you at this moment, Lord Jesus, making a transition from where we were playing, playing the guitar, Lord Jesus, it's, we, we love you, Lord. We do what we can for you. We, we, we appreciate you, Lord, for the talent that you've given us, our musicians here, Lord, and our brother Ernie and myself, and plays the trumpet, and we're, we're thankful for that, Lord Jesus. We ask you that you help us this morning and be with us as we endeavor and try to go forward in this little teaching, and we'll continue, and as we, we can break it down to, to like a building block, is laying the foundation that we can be able to find our way if people are are needing this teaching and not only the people out in the streets that have no God, no hope, no wow. direction, but also the people that are in church, 
They yes. don't know what to do because of all the confusion around them. Yes. Whatever it may be, confusion in the home, confusion at their jobs, confusion in the nation. Conf it's confusion all over the place, Lord Jesus. So at this morning, we surrender, Lord, our, our energies and our thoughts and help us to be focused on our teaching this morning so we, we may be able to fundamentally say what you're saying, not what we think we're saying or what we want to say, but what you said in your word. Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning and praise you for everything that you've done. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. We, uh, we're starting, uh, this is going to be perfection number two. And for those of you that uh, have uh, an understanding, I think it was in 11, back in November, it started number one. But for the, for the sake of uh, brevity and for the sake of staying on track, because I, 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 I tend to jump around too much. So to be fair to you, to be fair to the people here, uh, we're going to uh, try to stay with the slides. So you, you pray for me again. What is perfection? That's the question that we have. And that's uh, perfection number two. It's, it's the, uh, uh, I wish I could go in Spanish sometimes, you know, and, and I want to because there's some words that, that, uh, that helps the Hispanic people. Uh, we, we are limited and are not only in, in the language, but sometimes we're limited to our understanding as individuals, and that's why the Lord has been talking to us and said, you're, you're going too fast. And I go, how can I go fast when that's all I know how to do? <laughs> let's, let's go. Let's go get to work. Don't talk to me about it. Let's just do it. And that's my thoughts. That's the way I think. Don't, don't tell me how to do it. Just let me do it. If you don't know how to do it, get out of the way. I'm going to show you how to do it. Then by then, guess what? I'm left all alone. And that's what happens. So to be a teacher, to teach like a brother Ernie, our, our missionary teaches us, it's very difficult to be a teacher. So the Lord has been leading us this morning. I, 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 I just want to open up a little bit with you so you can understand what I'm, where I'm coming from. I was trying to make it simple and so simple. I said, Lord, you got to help me because the people need direction. They need instruction. And that way you can actually say, oh, it's like a stop sign. Here we go. It's like a stop sign. You drive any, most of us know how to drive a car. Um, most of us know how to drive a car. Uh, no, I'm, <laughs> uh, I, I want to say some things. I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Come on. But uh, I, I asked a, a person one time to move the car for me in my carport. No names mentioned. Okay, that's the thing. Could you please go forward in the car? So I thought that the person knew how to drive. Uh, so, I, I, you know. So I took it for granted because you should learn how to drive. So anyway, he drove, he drove the car forward a little bit, you know, but uh, I don't know what pedal he hit and, and, and he ended up going into the wall, the water heater and stuff like that. So I ended up having to fix it. And guess who false it was? It was my fault because I assumed right now this morning, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm trying to lay a foundation and I believe that it's the Lord leading me. How insane it might sound to you, so crazy. Okay. But it was my fault because I assumed that he knew, or that person, or she knew, had it covered. So, and that's what happened. So I took, I assumed all the responsibility. Not only did I assume the responsibility, I fixed it. Fixed the wall, the drywall on the inside, had to move the, the water heater, do some work on it. Anyway, it got done. So here we go. This morning, God bless you, everyone that's here. Those of you that are online and those of you that are on YouTube that will watch it at a later time. And if you do watch, if you do want to learn a good uh, study on Job, uh, just mark your, your, your time because we'll be doing that. Job is a beautiful picture and, and uh, it's in the, it's, you'll find out about it as we, as we go to it, okay? The question this morning that we have and I want to thank everyone for being in their place uh, and uh, in, in the audio and in the video and those that are watching and taking notes this morning. So what is perfection? If you ask yourself, I've asked myself that quite a bit, but there has to be 
um, an answer to it. But sometimes it's so simple that we just don't get it and it goes over our head. And that's the way we are. We just want something to be perfect, okay? But the question here is, what is perfection? And by definition, we can get into a lot of stuff and, and, and into dictionaries, etymology, etc., etc. But this is a, this will be number two. We'll give you the information as we go on to studies. But the very first one was, what is perfection? And it was back in November, but I'll give you the dates later on. So what is perfection number two is today? Where may I find this perfection and can uh, I attain it? And I use the word can because can, in, in the grammar, it's like physically able to do it. That's the way I understand it. Now may, perfection and may I attain it is permission. Okay. So there's two things that if you want to interpret, go ahead and interpret it, okay? So you have that, okay, that attitude. So this morning, we're going to, uh, we're going to try to, uh, Brother Stone, could you do me a favor? Could you work this for me and so I can get it going? What is perfection? We're gonna go to the second slide so we can go uh, and um, what is perfection? What is perfection to the believer? Amen. What is perfection to the believer? Let me go to the first slide. Okay, now I'm on. Thank you. What is perfection to the believer? How many of you guys believe? I'm going to ask you if you're here. Those that are here. Believe in the Word of God. Amen. Okay. So what is perfection to the believer? What is perfection? That's the question. To the believer, there's an answer. And I'm not going to speak about three kinds of believers, but I'm going to tell you, go ahead. So there's three kinds of believers, okay? There's a believer who's a real believer, and I'll give you a, 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 a working definition so we can understand each other. Okay. A real believer in baseball, in Major League Baseball, he's a believer, he's a fanatic. He's crazy about it, he knows the statistics about the pitcher, the hitter, Man, and et cetera, et cetera, and so forth. He's got a favorite team, and he's got tickets for the season. Now that's a real believer. Mm. And he's got the best seats and he, he pays to be there. He wants to, he identifies with us. He's got a t-shirt. He, maybe he has a, a <laughs> bats and, and balls saved from, the, from, those, from those guys that he claims to be his, the team. Okay, That's a real believer. Now, a make believer, we'll talk about it during uh, lunch time or break time at, at work. We'll see, oh, the, the Orioles beat the uh, the Pirates, and I don't know if they call them that, that way anymore, or the Indians, it used to be the Cleveland Indians. Uh, so, and, and I, don't hurt nobody, okay? I'm just saying it the way it was. Oh, yeah. That's the way it is, okay? But uh, anyway, so everybody thinks that, well, they should they should have done this. Well, the manager should have done that. He should have done that, and then that's, that's, uh, that's a pretty good believer. But he doesn't go to the baseball game. He doesn't My. buy the tickets. My. But he speaks a good talk okay. yes okay so we have a real believer and kind of a make believer that's a good talker and talk, knows a little bit about it blah 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 and Monday morning or even maybe even Friday talks about it during break time so so the the young believer he says what are you guys talking about man <laughs> just baseball Ooh, that's a slow game who would want to watch a baseball game you guys are crazy you guys are nuts how many of you here in this this morning here in this little facility we're here in the mission understood what I just said? Nah. Can you identify? Can you understand that? Oh, beautiful. Yes. That's the way the gospel is. That's the way the gospel is understood. Jesus said, go preach the gospel and tell everybody, I don't care where you're at, either in the jailhouse, in the prison house. Jailhouse is one thing. Prison house is another. Jailhouse is here with our, used to be my friend, the Maricopa County Sheriff, Sheriff Arpaio. That's the jailhouse. Now the prison is a state prison. It could be maybe even the federal prison. So there's two different things, but it doesn't matter where you're at. When you receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, when you've been transformed, when God reaches your heart, you become 
I'm telling her, you, 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 you're, you're enthused. That's what happens to me. You can't help it. Okay. Wow. That's a believer. Those are the kinds of believers. Okay. So, perfection is a challenge. It's a test. It's a contest. How many of you have been to an interview at a job? Anybody here? Yes. Good. Okay. And they'll ask you some questions. Tell me about yourself. <laughs> you don't want to ask me that question. <laughs> because they'll, they'll, they'll run me out. You know, I start talking about where I was because I get my toolbox and I start saying, well, this is what happens, what I've done. They say, you're out of here. You're, you're overqualified. Not only you're qualified, overqualified. You're crazy. Get out of here. We, we can't use you. You're too good. They'll patronize you, etc. If I'm identifying with here or some people here and, and the little issue that we have, that's fine. If we don't, somebody's catching it out there Are you going to identify with that. But follow the, follow the, the, the teachings we're going to have on perfection. Okay, so it's also basically a challenge, it's a contest. So when you break it down, it's a simplicity, it's a contest. Now, I, I remember going back to challenge, I remember that uh, I said, I love that. They were asking me a question at, at an interview, I'm not going to tell you where, but I became a director of a learning center. Can you imagine that? Brother Alex at a learning center. And guess what? I went to the learning center and I learned. I did not teach, but I was a center of learning. And that's the way it is. Sometimes we just don't know where we're at. And God will put you in a place. God will use you. Maybe give you a spanking. Maybe a little, little hurting. But he's going to get your attention. And it's a contest. It's a challenge. So I said, I accept the challenge. I, want to, I, I love challenges. I want to do that. So anyway, when I found out, it was like a contest. I was struggling with the staff because they're still deal dealing with the Old Testament. <laughs> wow, making the transition now. They were dealing with the Old Testament. This is the way it is. Hey, I know all about this and this. You're not gonna tell me, you're the new sheriff in town. I said, okay, fine. Now perfection, perfection is a challenge. Perfection is a contest. And perfection is a prize. When you win the contest, there's a prize at the end. Now, in the Bible, there's a prize given to those that overcome. Man. Can we say amen to that? Man. Okay, that's good. I finally got an amen. Okay. That's, uh, they're probably, th probably worth thinking about New Year's Eve, right? <laughs> Maybe the good food or the good game or whatever it is. But that's okay. That's part of life. And uh, I'm very happy because I'm going to go to the scriptures now. This is Bible. This is what I just said. And as a human being, I might be mistaken. I might err. And we make mistakes. But Jesus is the Word. And He doesn't make mistakes. In the New Testament, Matthew 5, 48. This is the Sermon at the Mountain, by the way. I have the notes right there. And this is when He... Jesus... It, it's kind of a scenario, okay? Here it goes. Here is John the Baptist introducing and preaching the gospel of repentance. Not only preaching and talking about repentance, but he wasn't praying for the sick. He was not making miracles or performing miracles. He was preaching the gospel of repentance. Repent. Okay. And be baptized unto repentance. And he was a baptizer and he would baptize the people there. Yes. And, and, and the and the and the and the place. And, and and here is Jesus, Jesus coming down and and he's fasting. And this is a scenario, this is at the same time, this is what's happening. John the Baptist, the guy that's preaching repentance, there's coming one fourth whose shoes are not worthy to, to tie. He's going to baptize you not only with water, but with fire. Amen. So there's a difference. Okay. There's two different ministries, two different per persons coming, two different entities coming together, all coming from the one entity, God Himself. Now here, here's Jesus saying in the Beatitudes, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. That was one of the, the, the things that he said in the Beatitudes. 
Yes. In the Sermon on the Mount. And he's saying, he said a lot of things. Amen. You read that and, and, and that you can't do any of those things. It's they're very difficult uh, to do, to perform, if you're not born again. Amen. Where are you going with this, Brother Alex? Like you're, you're, changing, you're going to born, born again. Okay. Mm. Jesus said at the end, and I put it there at the end, 548, that's the end verse. Okay. Be ye therefore, be ye, being you and me, be ye therefore perfect, even as your father. How many of you have a father? Man. Man. We have an earthly father. Man. But we also have a heavenly yes. father, Man. which is in heaven, is perfect. And I put some notes there so you don't think that I'm just um, imagine these things. No, Jesus speaking here. And the Sermon on the Mountain. And Jesus talks about perfection, in other words. That's what I'm trying to get to you. Okay. And, and, and I had to do this because I, I was having a very difficult time. I want to break it down so we all, all understand. So I'm, instead of going to the etymology, I, want, I called it a, a, a working definition. <laughs> and I came up with this. And this is what I wanted to tell you. This morning, I, I said, well, this afternoon, I, I, this morning I started, I said, Lord, help me to make it simple. We'll call it a working definition. So I typed it, working in definition, because I only needed three more slides because of my thoughts. And I put it under a working definition. Okay, no, people are going to think that, that they, now they have to work for perfection. And, and I said, well, I, I, I don't, can't do that. Lord, help me. I open the Bible. <laughs> I just opened it. And that came up. You know, I didn't jump and scream because, you know, how you, you just open the Bible sometimes and he leads you to something that you need. So, in our slide, this slide right here that we have, uh, our definition for perfection, and I put it on there, the title for that slide is Our Definition for Perfection. A finished product is a thought. It's a finished product. But we know that Jesus Christ is the author of our salvation, of our calling. He is the author, not only is an author, an author writes. A beginning of the book, he gives it a title. Man. He gives it an ending. But an author is also a person that originated it. Amen. Made it up. Yes. And he thought about it. He put the work into it. He put all this work into it. So yes, Jesus Christ is the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. That's the word of God. So a finished product is the, it's a perfection. Mm. I'm going to go a little bit, okay? As we speak of a finished product, we speak of St. Paul. St. Paul was a Pharisee, and he was a Pharisee, not only a Pharisee, but a Pharisee of Pharisees. The best. Is he epitome? Top dog. That's who he was. Not just an ordinary guy. Now he didn't talk like the other guys who say, well, you know, we had to put them guys in jail, those hallelujah guys that are doing crazy. We had to just put them in jail. You know, it, Paul said, no. We're going to write about it. We're going to write a warrant out. We're going to give it to the sheriffs. And they're going to do it. We're not even going to just talk about it. We're going to do it. And this is who St. Paul was before he was St. Paul. He was called Saul of Tarsus. A very intellectual person in the Bible. He knew it all. He knew all about the, the Old Testament. Knew all about Moses. Knew all about the laws. The laws. I dare to say, go a little bit further, say he was an attorney. Okay. You can write me and talk to me about that. Give me a call. They'll give you. They'll give you the information here. But St. Paul, that's the kind of a guy he was. Not, even, not only he went that far, but he put people in jail with a warrant. He got to the point that he reached one of those hallelujah guys who's one of those fanatics just happened to be a deacon but that deacon
and his name was Esteban. Not only that, but he was full of the Holy Ghost. That was that was a problem to him. Man. Now he he got his his clothing off and he challenged them. And there was a debate going on. Yes. And they couldn't put him down. And here's St. Paul out here at the end. Holding the rag here. Of the saint. He didn't throw no rocks now. But he got the warrants. Okay. And he walked the talk. He was not just anybody. He, just, he was a real believer. Mm. Brother Alex, you're getting into problems. You're crazy. I know that already. You don't have to tell me that. I'm crazy for Jesus. Nice. Because from that time, something happened. And it's not by works. It's not by how good we are. Amen. We can't do it by ourselves. Amen. We can't be perfect. But here's St. Paul, anyway. He... He's, he's out there and they killed the deacon. They stoned him to death. But he didn't, they didn't kill him. He went to sleep. The Bible says, I see, yes. <laughs> uh, I, I see that man full of the Holy Ghost. I mean, they went crazy because they couldn't hear his words. They couldn't bear him. They could not stand to hear what he was saying, what he preached, what he believed in. He was a real believer. Now that guy was a real believer. But St. Paul, anyway, this is what the kind of guy he was, St. Paul. He became a killer. He persecuted the church. Okay, we'll let that stay there. He persecuted the church. Went after the Christians. This is what happened to St. Paul. So I can get to my slide. Those of you that know, one day he's uh, on the road, on a high horse, on a horse, and there's people there, and he's going to go uh, go after some more Christians. And on the road there, he fell off his horse. He got knocked down. A light shone. He heard a voice. Yes. yes. And the voice told him, Saul, Saul. Why dost thou persecute me? He turns around, look around, everybody's looking at the soldiers are there, people the soldiers are there, all the sheriffs with their guns or whatever you want to call them, they're there. Because they're gonna go put some more people in jail. That's what they do. <laughs> so so as they went there, he's he's saying, What what am I what, who art thou, Lord? And right there, there's something right there. He said, who? He didn't say, what are the, what, what are you talking about? He says, who art thou, Lord? Amen. He knew he, he made the connection Amen. with the person that he talked about and believed in. And now he, it's a reality going on. Now, that light shone on him. He became blind. He couldn't see anymore. I am Lord who's out persecuted. I am Jesus. Amen. And those of you people that have not received the baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are persecuting Jesus because you refuse to accept the name of Jesus Christ. He is your Savior. And I can prove to you by the Bible that that Savior, that born in a virgin womb, came not only as a person, but as your kinsfolk, as your relative, yes. as a man. To die for you on the cross. And it was Jesus Christ. And that same Jesus Christ became Lord of all things. And I can take you back to the before the foundation of the world. There's so many scriptures, and we'll be going to those if you want to follow us in those those teachings that we'll be having. So real fast forward now, I will go to my slide. Be ye or be ye. But ye, okay. <laughs> but ye, all of you, all of you out there, Amen. you're a chosen generation. Amen. Yeah, that's the word of God. First Peter 
to think tonight. And you're a finished product. You're chosen, first of all. You lined up there in the beginning before the foundation of the world. And you're there, and Jesus is saying before the foundation of the world, I elect you, I choose you. Why do you choose that guy? Because there's something in there I know there's, he's got. I want that. I need that. I got to have that. I got to have that. I need you. You're a little hook-nosed Jew, Paul. And you're a fiery temper. I need you, man. He's chosen. And Peter... He gets a sword out when he became a disciple. He cuts a ear off of a guy. A man of action. Pulls his gun out. Right, you ain't going to do that to my Jesus. That's a real believer. Yes. But something happened to Peter. And he became one of the rocks. Okay. Ye are chosen. You are a chosen generation. Here it goes. It's just that you're not just a chosen generation. You're a royal. There's a kingdom. There's a, there's a king. And you're part of the kingdom. You're a royal priesthood. We're supposed to pray for those. Pray for one another. Lay hands on those people that are, that are sick. Be healed. You're, you're going to be okay. You're, you're okay. We're, we're a royal priesthood. We're a holy nation. We're sanctified by the word. St. John 17, 17. We're a peculiar people. We're not just anybody. You've got a weirdo. Got, look at that lady over there. Well, she's got a dress. She's not smoking a pipe. She ain't smoking a cigarette. No high heels. Oh, man. Oh. Talking to all of you guys out there, okay? I wanted to marry a lady, and God gave me a lady. I didn't know, know any better. I was without love. I wanted somebody. I saw her, boom, that was it. From that time, got knocked out. That was it. I couldn't think. But this is what I want. This is where I'm going with this. Those of you that want to marry, you want to marry a lady. You want to marry a lady that, that makes love to you. That doesn't dress, that goes down the street. Yes. For everybody to look at her. How, how would you feel if you had a, a, a wife like that? You, maybe you guys don't understand. Maybe we're so far gone in our minds. We, we lost it. But I'm just telling you, a holy nation a peculiar people that we should show forth praises. How you doing, brother? Get out of my way, man. Oh, dog, get out of the way. Please don't tell me about it. I've done it. You heard my confession. Okay. Confess, <laughs> confess your sins one to another. Is that Bible or no? Yes. Oh, I got another amen. Oh, God is good. That you should show forth the praises of Him who has called you. Not to yourself. Not praises to yourself, but to Come Jesus. Amen. Brother Alex, how, how can you be doing that when well, you're such an old game? I'm not banking on Him. I'm banking on Jesus. Because He hasn't allowed for death or for Satan to take my life yet. Wow. That's how he's good for Satan's good. He's an errand boy. <laughs> he needs permission to do anything. Yes. He ain't God. He might be God of this evil earth, but he ain't my God. Amen. Okay. Peter. But ye are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you. He's called you. He's called each and every one of you. He's called each and every one of that's here right now. And those of you that are hearing this voice or are watching this video, whatever it is, he has called you out. 
of darkness and into his marvelous light. He's got a marvelous light. He wants to tell you that he loves you, that you're not just any old body, but you're being called to give eternal life to others. Give eternal life to others. You're crazy, Brother Alex. You flipped out. I know that. Because I'm a believer in the Word of God. We are to give eternal life. How are they going to get eternal life if you don't tell them about it? If you don't point them to the right direction? You don't have to come to this mission to be saved. Go to any church that preaches the full gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. From Genesis to Revelation. But walk the talk. And, and walk, walk the talk and believe everything that's in there. Okay? Am I a little bit too loud now? Okay. Out of darkness into the murderous light. Okay, come back to Job. There was a man in the land of Uz. There was a man in the land of Phoenix, Arizona, whose name was, put your name on there, was Job. And the man was perfect and upright. One that feared God and eschewed evil. He hated evil. He got away from evil. He might have seen evil and go like this, but he hated it. Okay. Maybe this will help you. When a man is born again, this is what happens to him. If he used to smoke a pipe or smoke a cigarette or, or drink the tequila or whatever it is that he did, he might be tempted. And he goes, he would go toward this and all that. And he's like, I'm not, I'm not there no more. He might even fall. Okay. What are you talking about, Brother Alex? You're freaked out. Okay. When that person does that, if he does something bad, he feels so bad, he says, Oh, Lord, I, I didn't want to do that. That's exactly it right there. When a man is born again, he's not, he does not sin. He does not sin. When a man is born again, he does not sin. Sin is unbelief. That's what it is. Now, if he falls and does something, the Lord will pick him up and rise him up. Give him a little spanking. Little kick in the butt there and send him on his way. He ain't going to do it again. I promise you that. So brother, I so what are, you, what are you coming from? A man that is born again, his thoughts are different, his heart is different. He doesn't get up in the morning planning to do bad. That's what, I'm That's what I wanted to get to. He doesn't plan in it. There's no device. There's no plan. Ah, I'm gonna go do that. <laughs> like those gremlins, ah, I'm gonna do it, ah, I'm gonna do it. No. He's walking like, like a God-fearing man, uh, learning how to, Walking like a child and learning how to walk in the newness of life. There it is. In the way because he's born as a babe. He's not born as an adult. He's born as a baby in Christ, like in a natural birth. He's born a baby, but then he grows up and he's learning by tutors. The Bible says, oh, thank you. He trips and he falls down. And somebody helps him up. Another tutor helps him up. And he goes on forward. And you can find those in Ephesians and your Bible in Ephesians 4.11, by the way. Those tutors, okay? God is good. In Job 1.1, that man, he lived in a particular place whose name was Job. You, can, if you, you need to identify yourself with the Word of God. Amen. Then you'll start getting it. That man was perfect and upright. And if you're not perfect, oh, wait a minute, well, hold on, I'm perfect. We're going to find out what perfect meant. We gave you a little bit at the beginning. And upright. You're called. And upright. And one that feared God. I'm not talking about being scared of God. Fear God is almost like put it, put it together with respect. Yes. Okay. Okay. There's, there's a lot of teaching in there. We, I'm, 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 I'm really happy with the Lord. What, he, what he's doing for us today. He, he, he. He does that, okay. The next slide. 
the, the book of Job. Somebody told me about the book of um, Ernie. Help me. The book of uh, there was a book of uh, uh, um, um, the movie came out about it. Anybody can help me? Yeah. Eli. 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 That's it. It's, it's, there was a, a book, another book that they found or something. Okay. <laughs> well, that's good. You know, I, I found the book. <laughs> I found the book. <laughs> Sixty-six books, Old Testament, New Testament. I'm not saying there's other, not other books, but this is the book. This is the way Jesus Christ said, "I am the way." I'm the way. Might be a lot of detours, but I'm the way. Jesus said so. I'm the way and the truth. Now there's many truths. There's a lot of truth. There's truth to the mathematics. No. There, there's truth in history. Yes, sometimes it's perverted. It's twisted. They take it out. But there's a real, genuine history. And, 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 and that's, that's what I'm trying to say. There's a lot of books. The book of Job is the oldest of the Bible books. Yes. Okay. And I'll tell you where we got that later on, okay? The book of Job, and this, this is this is common knowledge of all the people that study the Bible. Of the Bible books, and was written before the giving of the law. Now that's something to, to go look, because I did. Now the law was given by God to Moses. In the tablets of the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Amen. We're, we're, on, we're on track. Okay. Okay. Ten Commandments. The book of Job was written before Genesis. Oh, what? Huh? Okay. Genesis. Now we're going to go into a little theology. Is that okay, guys? Okay. I heard this by my pastor preached on this, by the way. Come on. Okay. So I checked that on the Bible. And guess what? He was preaching the right thing. The Pentateuch. I might have enunciated wrong. Okay. I might have enunciated wrong. By that I mean I might pronounce it wrong. Same thing. Okay. Nevertheless, the Pentateuch. The first five books of the Bible were written by Moses. Yes. He's the lawgiver. Moses was the lawgiver to Israel. Jehovah God was the writer with his finger. David to Moses, a prophet. Then he gave it to the people. You're going to do this because you've been bad, guys. You know, I, I have a hard time with the Old Testament because why, why, why do the, does God always give him a break in a sense? Okay. Stay on track. Stay on track. Genesis is the first Bible, first Bible book of the Pentateuch. It's a book of origins, of the beginning of life. And of the ruin through sin. Its first word in the beginning, Man. God, is in striking contrast with the end, what happened in the end. And the quotation is in a coffin Man. in Egypt. And I put the note there, a quote from the Schofield Bible. Don't think I came up with this great thought. It was already written. Wow. Isn't that wonderful to know these things? Isn't it beautiful to, to, to hear this? And, and the Pentateuch. Okay, and then we, we start going to give you a little bit more information. Because this Job, this, this perfection will take you there. Exodus is the second book of the Pentateuch of the Old Testament. And it's the book of redemption. The first need of a ruined race. Oh, God. Leviticus is the third book of the Pentateuch of the Old Testament and is the book of worship and communion. 
the proper exercise of the redeem. Okay. By the way, if those of you that want this information, and or you can copy it as you as you or download it, however you do it. But if you want more information, we'll give you the, the even the uh, all the notes on it. A PowerPoint will send them to you. Just give us your email address, and we'll send them to you. Okay. <clears throat> Numbers is the fourth book of the Pentateuch of the Old Testament and speaks of the experiences of a pilgrim people. This is why one of the reasons we're saying I'm a pilgrim and a stranger wandering through this world of sin. No? Are you with me? <laughs> okay. okay. The redeemed passing through a hostel. <laughs> or just take off. The redeem. The redeem. How many of you know what redeem means? Uh, thank you. I got one person. Well, I'll take it to, to I'll make it real simple for those who don't understand it, so you probably don't, but just for the sake of argument. To redeem is a verb, is action, to bring back, to restore it, to pay a price. And in, in, the, in the, the place where they have all these uh, things, what do they call them, Brother Stephen? The storehouse where they have guns, guitars, tools, and all that. Pawn shop. Uh, the pawn shop. The pawn shop. This pawn shop, <laughs> oh God, I'm telling you. There's God and Satan. Was the closest thing was the right hand to God. God moves his pawn. Adam and Eve. Puts Adam, not Eve, he puts Adam in the Garden of Eden. To keep it straight. I'm going to leave it right there. Satan says, oh, okay. Serpent, don't you go in here. Things are happening around us, people. A passing through a hostile scene to a promised inheritance. We have a promised inheritance. Deuteronomy is the fifth book of the Pentateuch of the Old Testament. Deuteronomy, in retrospective, and, and I, uh, I I know this because I have a hard time putting words and def the definitions to understand what words. But I know in my Spanish because my daddy was spoke Spanish, understood Spanish. Retrospective. So that's retrospective. Got it. Retrospective. To go back and check it out. Pro, you go forward. That's simple. But it, different people, people learn differently. And that's why I'm trying to go slow because I, I'm not an erudite, I'm not a scholar, so I have to bring it down so I can understand it myself. But I know that the people need to understand what we're talking about, what the Bible says. It's a book, Deuteronomy is a book of instruction. For the redeemed about to enter the inheritance. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, now as we go into Job, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. How many of you believe the word? That's Job 1 6. Amen. Now, there was a particular day, I don't know if it was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, or Saturday, or Sunday. I don't know. But there was a day, the Bible says, and there it was. There was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Brother Alex says that word, yes, according to the oldest book. Not the book of Eli, it's the book of Job, right here, in the Bible. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence camest thou? When comest thou? Whence? When, when did you come? Then Satan answered the Lord to talk to him. The right hand man talked to the Lord's right hand man. 
before he fell and he answered the Lord and said from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down I like that up and down okay. and the Lord said unto Satan hast thou considered my servant Job that there is none like him in the earth a perfect and an upright man one that feared God and eschewed evil eschewed evil so this, all these guys they get together the sons of God and Satan is amongst them and they go there and then he talks to Satan God only talks to Satan not to the other sons of God see those, those there's your there's your difference you're looking at. Okay. And, and, the, and it goes on. The challenge by Satan. Then Satan answered God, the Lord. Doth Job fear God for naught? In other words, we could say in, in our way we talk today, what are you talking about, man? You, you got everything for him. You do everything for him. You gave him everything. There it is right there. Job 10. Satan talk. Hast thou made a hedge? You, you fenced him about him. Not only did you fence him, you also his house. And all that he has on every side. I mean, he's questioning him. He's talking to God. Thou hast also blessed the work of his hands. And his substance, all that he has is increased in the land. Everything gets bigger and bigger. I mean, you give him everything. But put forth now. But put forth hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse him to the face. Satan talked to him. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only up upon himself put not forth a hand. So Satan went from the presence of the Lord. Now, this is, I'm, I'm winding now, okay. The scriptures to study, there's the contrast of Job 1 6, and I'm going to give it to you right now, in between Job 2 1. Here it goes. The contrast. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Okay, he was there with them, okay? And again, there was a day when the sons of God, that's Job 2, I believe, Job 2 1. Again, there was a day, there's another day. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present, there's a difference right here, himself before the Lord. This time, he came to pre Satan came to present himself, not just to be amongst the brethren. He presented himself before the Lord. Man. There's the difference. I, I went so you, so you could tie in what we said in the very first beginning. I'm going to take you to the first beginning. A finished product. How many of you remember that? When First Peter says, ye are chosen, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. This is who we are. But we, we lost our way. We forget who we are. And we're finishing with this. Right at the end. There's a, we're going to talk about the contrast now. Now, I have here on this slide here, which is Deuteronomy 32, 9. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Now, I went to the scripture because I've always had this question, and, and if I've had it, I'm sure you've had it. You remember that, how many of you have seen the, the Ten Commandments? Nine. And where the people sinned and they did bad things. And 
but yet they're, they're being called out. But then the people did some bad things and they got, God punished them. God killed even some of them. It was awful. How many of you have heard about Samson? Samson, the guy who, Man. who was a champion. God chose a champion and, yes. and he, 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 he fought the Philistines. Not only that, he fought him, he killed him. But his champion, Samson, used to like women. He would do bad things to them. But yet he was his champion. I don't get it. I don't get it. That was a question I had. Then David, another guy, I'm just taking him out, okay? All of a sudden, a man born to be a, a king, a prophet, a leader, a man after God's own heart. And he takes a woman that didn't belong to him, commits adultery, and he kills her husband. And then later on he's crying, Lord, Lord, what did I do? You can find it there in the Psalms. It's awful. But then, then he, God sends his kids and redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and he, he's so different and he does all these things. But why, why does all through the Old Testament from the time of Moses, from the Exodus, there's the sacrifices going on and all these things going on and all these things. And he gives them a new champion. He gives them a new champion 40 years again. And he gives them a new one. I don't have time to go into that. Maybe I shouldn't have gone into that. But if you, those of you that know a little bit about the Bible, you know that I'm telling you the truth. So with all that, I, I saw this, that Moses was singing in De Deuteronomy 32, 9, 9, the first chapter, the first verse started singing. This is his song. For the Lord's portion is his people. His people. God's people is Israel. Jacob is also means Israel. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. How many of you understand that so far? Uh, the word, not me, but the word. Okay, amen. Okay, I entitled this Deuteronomy 32.10 and I put on there the apple of his eye. He found them, talking about Jacob, talking about Israel. Now, the scriptures, all scripture has double compound meaning, sometimes multiple. Okay. You can chase it and find it, and it's there. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. You know, I see Jacob himself. Jacob. Here's Jacob in the wilderness, like in the desert like in Phoenix, Arizona. And he's leading him about. Not like a dog, but he's leading him. I want you to go there. Go there. Go there. And he's leading him. He's instructing him. He's teaching him. This is the reason I'm telling you to go over here because you should have done this to, to have done this. You should have made a left turn instead of the right turn. You should have gone straight instead of taking the detour. Okay. And he kept him by keeping him. He protected him. He didn't just throw him to the wolves. He protected him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. This is what the Lord has done for us. If, if, a, if you catch anything today, brother, sister out there, you can't catch anything else. There's a song. His eyes on the, the sparrow. And his eyes is watching you for his eyes on the sparrow and he watches over you why should I be discouraged why should the trouble get me down I'm just ad living as I can try to tell you that God is, has his eye on you if Jesus is my portion and he cares for me at all because his eye is on the sparrow. And he flies sparrows. Right? And he watches over me. Everything that we do. Everything that we don't do. He watches us. 
He watches while we're at work. And he watches us when we're not working. He watches us when we're sleeping and when we're not sleeping. He watches all the time. He knows all about it. But you are the apple of his eye. Because he has chosen you before the foundation of the world. We're past eternity. Come here just like Jesus Christ. Oh God. Just like Jesus Christ come from eternity. We have come from eternity. Come here to be tested and proven here on earth by five senses, by five avenues, our memory, imaginations, our conscience, our affections, and our reason that keep troubling us. But in the soul, when he elected us and he selected us and chose us, he knew and we said, yeah, we want to be with you, Jesus. I want to be one of them. Because now, the apple, you're the apple of his eye. So don't discourage, Heavenly Father. We come to you at this time. There are people who don't understand the Bible. We want to teach on the book of Job. We want to bring these little blocks of words of encouragement. That it's not the end of the world. It's just the beginning. Because he's the author and the beginner. But he's the finisher also of our faith. And they gotta have faith, and the only way we can have faith is it come. Faith can only come by hearing of the word and of the word of God. Because that's the way faith comes. Let them be able to come every Sunday, Lord Jesus. If they have no place to go to come and hear at least the words of encouragement. Because faith cometh by hearing. And muscle building of faith. Muscles of faith. That we can tell the devil you're a liar. You're, you're just a deceiver. You're just so good because that's your job. But I am a born again son of the daughter of God. And I'm going to follow him all the days of my life. And I've got no other place to go. Lord Jesus says those people that might have a cancer in the soul. Which is many of them. They might have a cancer in the body. And at this time and at this moment, we take full authority under the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and condemn that spirit and tell it to leave those bodies. Amen. Lord Jesus, we don't order them. We're asking for mercy for them because we're here to give eternal life. We're here to point them to the right place, Lord Jesus. Heal them, Lord Jesus, at this moment, Lord. If they can't walk, let them walk. Let them walk, as we've seen in on a missionary field, walk. Let them hear, as we've seen them here, Lord Jesus. We're not a bunch of fanatics. We've seen you in action, Lord Jesus. You're a real living God, and you're truthful to your word. We love you, Lord Jesus. This is why you come. To follow you, Lord Jesus, to worship, to sing songs unto you, and to tell that people, that you are real and that there's only one way at the end of our job at the end of our journey we're born here on earth but one day that heart will beat the last beat we can't skip a beat that beat that heartbeat will be the last one and we have to make sure that we're locked in we're locked in into your grace and into your mercy so we can go into your arms and go back into eternity where we've come from and go back to our loved ones because there is a place beyond the river love Lord Jesus we love you Lord Jesus we thank you we ask you bless everyone this morning loose those people that are bound by religion by whatever thoughts are, are, are dragging them down Lord Jesus we believe you Lord Satan, loose them, for they're not your property. There's God's property. He paid the price on Calvary. An innocent one paying the price for salvation and redemption. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this morning. We thank you for the near coming up. Be with us as we endeavor to keep going forward and working for you. We thank you, love you. We ask it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Ernie, or Brother Stella.
God bless you. The Lord be with you. Thank you. Let us stand and let's give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. Let's, let's warm up here. Let us, let us worship. It's that, it's the old time Holy Spirit and the devil won't go near it. That's the reason people fear it, but it's good enough for me. Is it, is it good enough for you? Amen. It's the old time Holy Spirit and the devil won't go near it. That's the reason. But it's good enough for me. And give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It will make you stop your life. It will save you when you die. It will start.
just love to sing that to the Lord. Amen. That's, you don't have peace. If those that are watching, if you're wanting peace, and just ask the Lord to sweep over your soul. Amen. Just brings peace to you. That's a, that's a beautiful song. Let us continue to worship and let's can we sing that once again? Let's sweep over my soul. That's just so beautiful, man. Sweep over my soul. continue to worship and tell him how much we appreciate him. Amen. Heavenly Father, okay, I appreciate you. Heavenly Father, I appreciate unto you, Lord Jesus. May you make yourself known, Lord Jesus. Lord, if they have given you a chance of opening the door to their heart, Lord Jesus, as the scripture says, I stand before the door and I knock. If anyone openeth, I will come into him and I will suck with him and he with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, those that are just this very moment that are watching, Lord, that said, Lord, that's God that they're talking about. I want to have an experience. I want to know Him as my personal Savior, as my Redeemer, as my Healer, as my Lord and Savior. And they open up their heart, Lord Jesus. Make Yourself known to them, Lord Jesus. Fill them with the Holy Ghost, Lord Jesus. 
Heal their body, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask that you give them their portion, Lord Jesus, that you have set aside before the foundation of the world for them, Lord. Lord, we ask all things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Those that are watching, Texas, Brother Gilbert, and those from Albuquerque, whoever and wherever you may be uh, that have, uh, you don't even have to necessarily watch this, uh, the videos, but our friends, our family, God bless you. Happy New Year's. We will have no uh, uh, service tonight. And uh, don't look at all the things that are happy. It's, it's scripture being fulfilled. Be happy for the new year. Another opportunity to give glory and honor to God. Another opportunity to make it right with Him before it's too late. Amen. Let us sing, take the name of Jesus with you. And may the Lord richly bless you, keep you safe as you are dismissed. Take the name of Jesus with you.